The best argument against democracy is a five-minute conversation with the average voter. Australia is known for a lot of things — its sandy beaches, its unique animals, its toilet paper shortages, and perhaps most importantly, its democracy. Sure, it's a broken democracy, with the recent sports rort scandal where the government favoured marginal or targeted electorates, rather than deciding on merit, in its allocation of sports grants. Of course, there was the robo-debt scandal where poor people on welfare were unlawfully targeted and accused of owing thousands of dollars in an unpaid debt, largely to prop up the government's budget bottom line, mind you. Yeah, it's a broken democracy, but it's our broken democracy. Bring in the 2020 local government elections. Yes, local council elections will be held on the 28th of March across all of Queensland's 77 councils. If you don't already know, voting in Australia is compulsory. Even if you think the system is broken, if you don't vote, you'll be slugged with a $133 fine. Take that, you communist hippie. But this video isn't about that. This video is about how to win an election in Australia. Simply put, erect a sign. Yes, if you don't erect a sign in Australia, you're setting yourself up for failure. Why? Because in our robust democracy, this is pretty much all people have to go by. To make a good sign, you need at the bare minimum your name and your photograph. If your name rhymes with sign, even better. Kerry Shine makes a good sign. That's what I've always said. If you want to go one step further, make sure you put Vote 1 prominently displayed on your sign. If you don't do this, perhaps people might accidentally vote you last. So make it easy on the average voter. Tell them exactly which number you want to be voted. I recommend number 1. If you're really confident, you can make a sign without actually putting your picture on it. To get away with this though, you probably already have to be a councillor. You also need to make sure that your name is long enough to fill up the entire board. Megan O'Hara Sullivan is a perfect name to do just that. Of course, many of these signs don't tell you anything about the candidate and what they stand for. In Australian democracy, that's not really the point. Name and photograph — they're the most important things to getting yourself elected in Australia. However, if you really want to pander to people like me who, you know, want to actually know something about your policies, you can always put a few key words on your sign. Kevin did a good job here. Water security, affordable rates, environment, working with you, for you. Carol has also done a great job. Experience, ethics, innovation, community. Of course, some people have taken advantage of the election to try to sneak in some free advertising. If we zoom in a bit closer here, we can see that somebody is advertising their steak and ribs party. By putting Vote 1 at the top, they're hoping the authorities won't catch on. These people haven't even bothered to disguise their sign and are blatantly advertising their home organising service. Of course, with political signs, as with everything else in Australian democracy, there are rules. Lots of rules. For example, on the Toowoomba Region website, the very first heading on their elections page is to do with election signs. And of course, there are a ton of associated rules which I won't go into here. So why are signs so important? According to the Moreton Bay Regional Council, these signs are intended to influence a person about voting at a government election or referendum, or affect the result of any government election or referendum. That's pretty clear. The reason all these candidates put up these signs is that they know that the average voter isn't going to go out of their way to look up any information about the candidates. When the average Joe gets to the polling booth, he's usually just going to vote for the names he recognises. Hence the signs. I actually really wanted to look up the list of candidates to find out exactly what they all stand for, but when I went to the Electoral Commission of Queensland website, there was literally only their names. Almost none of the candidates have an associated party, and most of them have not even bothered to submit a How to Vote card. They also include who nominated them and that they had to pay $250 for the privilege. If you do a search online, you might be lucky enough to find some information about your candidates, but in this case, I was met with a paywall. Of course, some of the candidates have Facebook pages, but that requires voters to actually put in some effort and look up individual names. For the average constituent, that sounds like too much hard work. Consequently, we have ourselves a democracy which relies on a whole bunch of signs, and the candidates know it. As we can see here, Bill has had his sign defaced by having a moustache added to it and a tooth removed. Other signs have been ripped out of the ground and left lying face down in the grass. 
If you look closely at these signs, one of them has been ripped out, but zooming in, we can see that things have been taken a little bit further. Not only has poor Rita been ripped out of the ground, she's been beaten to within an inch of her life. If you look at the sign behind Kevin here, that's actually Rita's sign. Wherever I went, Rita had either been defaced, pulled out, or beaten. And that's Australian democracy in a nutshell for you. Lots of signs, no real policies, and if you don't like a candidate, sneak out at night and break down their sign. Ah, you've got to love Australian democracy.